All right, Rocketeers, strap in because we're going for a ride. We're going to spend most of this video on the live equipment. We're going to spend a minute or two here on the board. I want to show you some of these options here, and then we'll see them on the live equipment and do some real-world labs as well. One thing, uh, it's not really a warning, but one thing I do want to bring to your attention is that when we're on the live equipment in this video, we are going to be using some commands that are very close in syntax say but the difference between show port security and show interface fast o2 and show port security interface fast o2 those are three different commands we're going to use all of them several times so you'll be clear on them but make sure you know what output is associated with each command especially those show port security uh, verification commands the show commands before we start showing our port security work though we have to actually do some of it so let's take a look here at a couple of choices. First off, we need to go ahead and make whatever port we're configuring port security on uh, an access port or a trunk port. And you're going to run into in later studies uh, situations where you can put port security on trunks and where you can't put it on trunks. Don't worry about it for right now. We're kind of saying you can just put them on trunks. What you're most likely going to do is put them on access interfaces on your switch and when we put a port in access mode that means that it is a member of one VLAN and one VLAN only. So we've got some other options here. I put the, that port on the board in VLAN 10 and then used iOS help and we'll use that again in a second here on the live equipment to see it a little more clearly. But I just want to bring these options to your attention. Aging allows you to set aging options for secure MAC addresses. Doesn't surprise you there. I'll show you a couple options there but it's very rare that we actually do that. Uh, MAC address allows you to specify secure MAC addresses. Maximum allows you to specify how many secure MAC addresses there will be and the default is one. So this is where it differs from a one-size-fits-all password a bit because we can say okay here are the three laptops that will be connecting to this particular port therefore we'll enter three secure MAC addresses. We can do that and again very important the default is one. Now, violation allows you to specify what action is going to be taken if a non-secure source MAC address comes in on that port. And we got to know these by like the back of our hand, to use that cliche, we've got to know these fertile ground for exam questions because the violation option has three important options of its own. And shutdown is the default. Now, it shuts the port down. I know you're saying another blinding glimpse of the obvious but it also transmits a message to the log indicating the action that was taken. It also drops the violating frames. And the interface status is going to be error disabled and what you'll actually see when we run show interface, serial zero or E0, whichever port we, kind of port we put it on, uh, or the fast port on the switch of course, you'll see error disabled up in the upper right hand corner. I will show you where that is during the lab because I have a feeling we're going to trip an alarm while we're doing that. Restrict is kind of our middle ground here of the three. It drops the violating frames. It transmits a message to the log indicating, hey, you know, I saw this issue, but it does not shut the port down. Protect simply drops the violating frames, and that's it. Now, I've got on the board here, and we talked about an example in the previous video, or you saw one where we were using a VLAN 10. We're going to do something a little different here than what we're seeing on the board, but we are going to start by setting a secure MAC address and then I want to go back and forth a couple of times with those commands that I was I mentioned earlier. So let me center this and you can see router 2 has just successfully pinged itself. Let's make sure that we can shoot one across to dot 3 and we can. We dropped one there for the R and there we go. So routers 2 and 3 can ping each other right now. We're concentrating on router 2. I'm not going to give you a diagram for this because I don't even want to insult you with one. But <laughs> routers 2 and 3 are simply connected to one switch, and that's it. They're in the same VLAN. Uh, no tricks here. I actually did a write erase on the VLAN, so we've only got one VLAN there. And what VLAN are they all in by default? VLAN 1. And what, what's another name for that default VLAN? The native VLAN. The native VLAN does come into play when we talk about trunking later in the switching section. So let's see. Let's take a look at switch two on excuse me, router two on the switch. It's connected to who moved my keyboard? O2. <laughs> Someone did. And you can see 
the usual suspects just what we want it's physically up it's up it's connected this just might change up here though as we do a lab here uh, with connected let's take a look at those options for port security because there's an easy one I'm gonna go ahead and make it an access port there's an easy one to miss here first off note that the commands all start here with switch port port security not just port security so here are the options we just saw you know aging MAC address maximum and violation but notice also there's a CR at the bottom so this is a legal command by itself so if we set the violation with obviously the violation option we set the number of secure MAC addresses with maximum we set the secure MAC addresses themselves with MAC address and then we've got some aging options on top of that what the heck does just the plain old switch port port security command have left to do what's left this command actually enables it on the interface you have to have this so it's very common when you're looking at a config the very first command you'll see when you get to the port security commands on an interface it's going to say switch port port security and then nothing after it you're enabling it because it is disabled by default so let's use our up arrow again and what we're going to do is set a secure MAC address note the format here uh, it's really kind of a uh, dotted hexadecimal you know you're not putting dashes in and sticky yeah, that doesn't sound fun. We don't like anything on our switches to be sticky. But you might want these. Configure dynamic secure addresses as sticky. We're coming back to that. Let's concentrate on our static entry, which is what we're doing now. And we're just going to make it the all A's address. And there you go. That's really all we need to get started because we know the default for violation we know the default for Mac secure addresses that's one so we don't have to configure those aging options are strictly optional so let's go over to router 2 and generate a little traffic and send some pings to an address that it could ping with no problem before we configured port security so it would appear something's going on and definitely something's going on here because all of a sudden we've got a message line protocol on E0 change state to down so it does indeed sound like we triggered something let's go over to the switch and run show interface fast 02 first and you can see the huge difference here we've seen this combination you know down and down but now we see something totally different error disabled that's where you're gonna see it you're not going to see too many different messages here during your CSENT and CCNA studies. I was actually trying to think of another one you would see during these studies. I don't think you'll see another one. But in your NP studies, you're going to be introduced to several different features that can shut a port down and you'll get different messages here like root inconsistent stuff like that. Uh, just a word for the future, make sure you're clear on those when you, take, when you go after your NP because you can see different messages here, not just error disabled so it would seem like port security worked pretty well you know we're we're down we obviously got some traffic that was sourced from an address that wasn't all a's now how do we verify that beyond this because as soon as you see error disabled that's a pretty good hint that port security did it but how can we actually really verify it well we're going to do that with show port security and first we'll look at the general command this is a good place to start when you're verifying port security. It's not going to give you a ton of exact information, but there's something I really want to point out to you here. It's just going to show you secure port. So this is the only port that we've secured. That's the only one you expect to see. There is the max secure address count, which we know by default is one. There's the current address, so it is learned of one source MAC address. And we've got one security violation and then the security action is shut down so notice right now total addresses in system 0 max addresses limit in system 1024 please note that both of these say excluding one MAC per port and most of you are saying well of course it does say that Chris I see it right there uh, people tend to overlook that somehow when they're doing some labs and they say hey wait a minute I got port security and shut down a port but it said it didn't learn any total addresses so make sure you realize that it is saying excluding one MAC per port, which of course is the default. 
it wouldn't make much sense to try to set it to zero secure MAC addresses because then that would defeat the purpose of what we're doing. So that's, that's some good information, but it's not giving us a lot of information about the port itself and what's going on. Well, here's that more long-winded one I mentioned at the beginning. Show port security interface, and then you just put right after that what the interface is. This is a fantastic command. Because going from top to bottom, of course, this is what you really want to look for because you can see the word disabled here and then still have all this information. And you know what you tend to do in that situation? You kind of gloss over that this is disabled because you see all this other stuff. It's like, oh, okay, here are the values I need. Well, if it's disabled, my friend, it doesn't matter <laughs> what all the other values are. Uh, and we've all fallen for that at once because uh, it's unusual. You would expect it if it said disabled that all of this would be gone, but it's not going to be. But in this case, it is enabled, and notice that port status is secure shut down. So we have secured the port, and it has been shut down. There's our default shut, uh, violation mode of shutdown. When you see a time set to zero in Cisco, that usually means that the timer has been disabled. So we're not aging anything out here and absolute aging type. We're not concerned about that because, again, aging has been disabled here. Uh, let's see. So we've got, and of course, any aging here of the secure static addresses has been disabled too. It's rare that you really get into the aging commands. We really want to concentrate on the other ones here. Max addresses, one, total MAC one, configured MAC one, sticky zero, last source address. So you can even see what the violating MAC address is. You know, that's, that's pretty cool because the other command doesn't show you that. And also, security violation count is 1. So, let's see what we're going to do about this. We've got, a, we've got a port violation. And what we're going to do now, let's say you come, to, you come in here and it's like, oh, I didn't mean to send that MAC address. I meant set, you know, this other one. So, what I'll do is just, uh, I'll take port security off the port. And then I'll just come back later and do it. So you and take care of it, the rest of the config. So you sit down and it's interface fast02 and you just do no switch port port security. And that's it. One thing I want to point out to you here before we start verifying that is that when you do that, no switch port port security, it's not going to take your other commands off. Uh, you've got to take those off manually. Of course, you can use your up arrow and just put a no in front of switch port, port security, MAC address, etc. But I just want to point that out. The one thing I have noticed, though, is that we haven't gotten any message on the console about that port being open. Right? So something seems to be a little odd. Let's run port security first. And you can see here, you will actually get read out here with the show command, even though there's nothing to show us. Usually we just get the blank line and then drops back to the console or, or to the prompt. But you can see here, it's just going to show you nothing when you've disabled port security on the one port you had it running on. So let's try port security interface fast 2 And this is what I was talking about a minute ago. It's disabled but you still have all this information here. And you'll notice it still says secure shut down. So why is the port shut down if we've actually taken port security off of it? I'm dropping that up there. No pun intended. Or any other message intended. So we've got fast Ethernet 02 is down, line protocol is down, error disabled. We've taken port security actually off. I mean, we nuked that. So why is this port still down? Why isn't it coming back up dynamically? Because by default, when a port has been error disabled, you must shut it down and then reopen it manually. It's not going to come back to life by default. So let's go ahead and do that thing. We'll actually go out to router 2 and do that. Because if we go out here and do a quick show, we still have, you know, now it's physically up but logically down. And now let's go ahead and just shut that interface and then do a no shut and let's see what happens. The interface came up, we expect that, 
What we're waiting for is that line protocol. And what do we do as world-class network troubleshooters when the line protocol comes up? We stick around for a few minutes and just make sure it stays up. So let's go ahead and send some data here because we got to give the switch something to eat, so to speak. So we're not going to drop the first one there. Okay, let's try that again. Hmm, why isn't that resetting? Because you have to do it on the switch port itself. You can't do it on the port, on the device that's connected to the port. You've got to shut and reopen this port on the switch. Oops. So all it did was a shut, no shut, but again, you can't do it on the device that's connected to the port. You have to do it to the switch port itself. And you see that line protocol came up, excuse me, interface came up. Line protocol changed state up. So that's looking good so far. Let's do a show interface FASTO2. And you can see now the error disabled message is gone. You know, we've got up, up, connected, everything is beautiful. Let's go to router two. Send that ping back across and see if we start getting it. There we go. And we send a second, we get all five. So if a great example there of exactly how you configure a secure MAC address, uh, what happened with the default violation, shut the port down, what we had to do, and a couple of great verification commands. Just make sure you know which one shows which information. In the very next video, we're going to take a look at that sticky option and what's going on with that. And then we'll do a slightly more convoluted lab because I know some of you are already thinking, well, can you mix some of these things? You know, what happens, if, what happens if you put three secure MAC addresses as the limit, but you only have two that you've configured on the router? What happens then? Or it's switched. What happens then? We're going to see that in the next couple of videos. In the next one, we will do that sticky lab, and I'll see you there.